What's up everybody? Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up the easy crayfish pattern. Um, crawdad, uh, freshwater lobster, crayfish, uh, to me they're all uh, basically trying to catch fish in uh, some of our local freshwater. You can see here we're uh, utilizing a product by Fly Skins. It's their exoskin. Uh, tying it on a jig hook with a little bit of weight. And um, it's a few steps, so that's why I call it the easy crayfish. Um, we're not trying to add a ton of materials or anything, but let's just go ahead and get started. We've got an FW550 A-Rex hook in a size 6. I'd fish this uh, smaller version in a size down to 4, 6, or 8. Um, we're going to go with a heavier thread. This is a wax thread by Semperfly in orange. It's an 8 aught, and uh, we're going to be uh, using that heavier thread to uh, basically secure some um, uh, lead eyes on this. And we'll go ahead and start our thread and end it at the uh, the bend of the eye. And at this point, uh, we're just going to grab some uh, some lead eyes. Like I said, we we want this to be dropping fast down to the bottom. Um, you know, by putting it at this position, it will cause it to one right hook point up, two um, basically give it a little bit of a a drop so that the 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 hook will be a little bit up so the claws might be up like kind of a defensive position. And so we're going to tie it in right here at the bend. Uh, so we're going to figure eight over this, crisscross back and forth. Um, about 20 to 30 wraps is where we're going to end up. And then I'll also do, uh, I don't know what this technique's called, but uh, as you can see, I'm crisscrossing it. And then I'll wrap over under or uh, hourglass uh, running the track. I don't know. Uh, but when you wrap around underneath that, it tightens those crisscrossing wraps and really securing those uh, uh, lead eyes in place. So make sure you do that. And the next step is we're just going to provide a little bit of thread base down the uh, the shank of the hook uh, just to help a lot of our materials uh, grip um, to uh, what we're going to be tying in first is our uh, rubber legs. This is a uh, tab leg that's been cut in half. Um, basically, I'm going to pull off about five fibers here. Maybe it's that's six. I don't really count uh, enough to make it super buggy. What we're tying in these is on my side of the shank of the hook. I'll tie it up the body just to get a little bit of uh, bulk to this body, um, and then I'll do the flying V over to the other side and uh, secure those uh, down the other side, and then kind of just grab them all together so that they're somewhat evenly distributed around that shank and then we'll wrap backwards well into the bend to prevent uh, fouling. And you don't want to pull too tight. We're not trying to cut these. I'm not doing like super tight wraps, but as I get more towards the middle of the shank, I'm wrapping tighter and then a little bit looser towards the back. But uh, that is secure. That is representing our small uh, antennae. Um, we'll go ahead and cut it about the length of the shank of the hook uh, for uh, proportion and, and you know that looks really good. So we could fish it as is. I'm joking. Uh, we're going to uh, next uh, tie in our wire. Um, that's going to be securing our uh, our claws, our exoskin to the to the to the bug. And I'm going with a 0.2 millimeter, a little bit stronger, a little bit heavier uh, wire uh, for that very reason. And it's in a red, but it looks kind of a very crawdad crayfish uh, color to me. So we'll tie that in, and then we'll create a dubbing loop. If you're never creating a dubbing loop, basically you bring it down, wrap it around your finger. Uh, I'm using about three or four inches here. I'm using my dub loop tool, putting it in, and then you close off that loop at the back of the the shank where we're going to be starting it. So uh, for the claws and the, uh, the 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 shell, we're going to be using this exo skin. Um, this is a uh, he's got a ton of different colors, especially in this uh, uh, crayfish uh, imitation. Um, a lot of oranges, some orange and green. Uh, but this is really durable stuff. Um, I'm basically cutting it uh, to be about two and a half times the length of the uh, the shank of the hook, and I'm just going to start with um, basically creating my claws. So I want a narrower center, and then I'll jump out here to the edge. And you can basically be the artist here. You can create whatever type of claw you want. Um, I've seen guys also attach a, a foam to glue the foam to these, so they kind of wiggle a little bit more. Uh, for simplicity, since this is the easy crayfish, we're just going to um, use it to imitate some uh, some of those uh, arms. And then, oops, it dropped it there. Um, but uh, just go ahead and trim it uh, so you got your claws. I don't really know what this shape is. We'll call it the crayfish shape. Get it? Because we're tying up a crayfish. Um, but we've got basically our, our body outline there, and now we're just going to create the uh, the claws by kind of coming into a, a, a V, uh, but leaving a little bit of gap there, 
a little bit of bulk because that's where we're going to pinch it through our uh, our hook and uh, um, you know we want it to be a little bit we're going for durability as well so um, there you go it looks like a crab claw I guess um, but uh, that is representing both our arms and I'll go ahead and right there in the very middle where we've got the most uh, material I'll go ahead and punch it through and at this point just go ahead and remove your hook from the vise and uh, slide that up kind of uh, out of trying to keep it out of our way but it is going to be a little bit difficult to tie around and so I usually twist this somewhat like um, so it's um, perpendicular to our hook shank at this point um, I'm going to go ahead and do a half hitch just to keep my thread secure so it doesn't drop off that and uh, the next we're going to be mixing two of Cohen's carp dub here the colors are crazy orange uh, and blaze orange so we're creating a blazing crazy orange and uh, we'll go ahead and pull out a good hefty chunk here and we'll put it uh, blend it just right here in our fingers um, you by stretching and pulling you can put it in a coffee blender if you want but I think that will ruin the length of the fibers and so I just do it by hand it's uh, we're not really going for a you know the fish are gonna really like it no matter what but we'll go ahead and put it in our our dubbing loop so it looks about like that and twist it up I've got about a four inch uh, roughly four inches worth of uh, dubbing here that just shrunk down to about three and a half and uh, we'll go ahead and just give it a light brush brush at this point to help create the bugginess we're gonna brush this a second time at the very end just to really pull everything out um, and then we'll uh, go ahead and palmer this around trying to uh, that first wrap is going to be a little bit difficult keeping those legs out of the way and uh, watch your thread and luckily we did that half hitch so we're not having to worry about knocking it off but basically touching palmered wraps all the way up it's got a pretty dense core which is totally fine um, we got to add a little bit more bulk towards the uh, the the back and then as we get up here towards the eyes it will thin out a little bit and then I right here kind of do an under method and then go up and over the eyes come around the other side go under and over the eyes and then the weight of this uh, uh, dubbing loop tool um, it's just gonna hang there so I can have my other hand free the uh, the dubbing loop is just dangling there with the weight of the tool itself and I'll just go ahead and secure it with some wraps behind and in front and I don't have to worry about my tool or the dubbing loop coming in done because it has a little bit of weight so um, kudos to Stonfo for creating an awesome tool so and I'll just do another half hitch since I'm in the half hitch zone today but uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our exoskin up over the top to do so I'm just going to measure it roughly you can see we got a little bit of bulk we're gonna cinch that down with the wire but uh, I just want to grab a little bodkin and we're going to poke a hole. I'm not stretching this super tight, but enough that uh, it's going to, you know, taper. And we'll just go ahead and pull that, uh, that puncture hole through the, uh, the eye of the hook. And uh, we'll just do a wrap or two, maybe three wraps up and over, securing that underneath. And then we'll also uh, do a couple wraps uh, right in front of the eye, between the uh, exoskin and the eye and that is pretty secure at this point so let's just do uh, maybe one more half hitch since we're going to be uh, uh, palmering this wire through I don't want to knock this off and uh, damage the skin not that I would because it's pretty durable but um, grab your wire now and we're gonna really kind of weave our way through this dubbing uh, it's impossible not to trap some down but we're gonna go ahead and uh, attempt the impossible here so holding the exo skin in place so that it's centered that first wrap I'm gonna really crank down make sure it's in position As soon as it's in position then secure it uh, then we're gonna work forward a little bit trying to work through that dubbing uh, the other side's not as hard to get through the dubbing because uh, we're basically pulling all the dubbing to the side I'm on now and so this is what you're seeing this is why I do it first person the other side we can pick that out not a big deal there's none getting trapped up over the exo skin so we're fine but just kind of weave your way in and out, work uh, your way up to uh, a wrap right behind the eye here, uh, the lead eyes, and then we're going to uh, secure it with um, a real tight wrap there, and then we'll come up around those eyes and we'll do a wrap around. And um, sometimes I do two, three wraps up here, but generally at least one full wrap, uh, potentially two is ideal. Uh, because uh, I have had the wire come undone with just uh, half a wrap and secured. Uh, that's just my 
confidence is having a, at least one full wrap, if not ideally two. So we'll go ahead and secure that wire, snip it out, and now we'll just do a little bit of a cleanup here, just trying to clean up those uh, fibers from being in the uh, the eye. I'll grab my whip finish tool, we'll do a three turn whip finish, and uh, we're going to be securing this with some UV resin, so we're not going to do a second whip finish. But uh, go ahead and trim out your uh, thread at this point. Careful not to cut your that that tab. And I actually measured that tab perfect. Um, sometimes you trim it, but I want about a quarter of an inch here, and then we'll come up here and make some slits in it. I always start in the middle and uh, work my way to the edges. Sometimes I can get two cuts to the edge. Sometimes I get one, and sometimes I try to get an extra one, and I end up cutting it short. But that is totally okay. Um, this is uh, the more buggy, the better. So. Well, that's not the best job I've done on cutting those, but it will work. So now we're just going to brush out uh, our dubbing the best we can. Um, this is wrapped pretty tight, uh, so oftentimes I grab a, a bodkin and pick it out. Uh, that wire is holding everything in place, so let's go ahead and grab that bodkin. And I just come in between the wire and pull some of those fibers out. I don't want to pull too much because then you might, you could affect the wire being a little bit more loose um, because that wire was wrapped tight. Um, a little overly tight I, I think I'm okay taking some of this out and uh, we're just picking it out to help get those uh, the Cohen's carp dub has some rubber legs in it um, and a lot of bugginess to it and so I'm trying to get that exposed and uh, increase my likelihood of this piercing the lip so um, there we go brush it out as much as you want the more you brush it out the uh, better it looks but uh, that's pretty easy pretty simple it's a durable fly not using a ton of materials, but uh, rather just uh, being awesome and then it's going to pierce some lips. The last step is I just drop a little bit of UV resin on each side of the uh, the eyes here. That kind of creeps into the eyes as well and uh, secures that thread and will cure it up. So um, there you have it. Uh, looks fishy to me. It looks like a crayfish. Um, should pierce some lips. Color combinations depend on your local water, but like I said, most of these materials come in a ton of different colors. So tie them up, fish them, uh, right hook point up so you don't have to worry about snagging on the bottom, but you still got to worry about those logs. So um, go get them and hope they work out good for you.